Hello friends, this is the second video lecture for the series which we have started for the crash course of CSI NET physical science exam and uh, in this video also we are going to discuss the syllabus of solid state physics and all the important topics and formulas of solid state physics okay uh, so let's start but before that if you are new on this channel and you didn't subscribe this channel till now please subscribe it and press the bell icon so that you will get the notification for all the new upcoming videos on this channel so let's start today's video so First of all, we are going to discuss the topic that is characteristics of crystal structure. This is one of the important topics for the exam point of view. So, first of all, we are going to discuss the properties like first property which we will discuss is the volume of conventional cell in case of simple cubic structure, body centered cubic structure and face centered cubic structure. So, what is the volume of conventional cell in all these three crystal structures that is A cube. Okay, what is A cube here or A here? So, A is the lattice parameter or lattice constant because we are talking about the cubic crystal structure. So, A, B and C all the three lattice parameters will be equal in this case. So that's why the volume of conventional cell for simple cubic, body centered cubic and face centered cubic will be equal to A cube, A cube and A cube. Okay. For lattice points per cell. Okay. Second property is lattice points per unit cell we can say. Okay. Per unit cell. So lattice points per unit cell for the simple cubic structure will be equal to 1. Body centered cubic structure is equal to 2. Face centered cubic structure it is equal to 4. What is it? It is the lattice points per unit cell that how many lattice points are or effective lattice points per unit cell so these are the numbers for the effective lattice points per unit cell for simple cubic it is 1 body centered cubic it is 2 and face centered cubic it is 4 ok now next property which we are going to study is the volume of primitive cell what is primitive cell primitive means a cell in which there is only one effective number of atom ok so in simple cubic structure, the volume of primitive cell will be equal to A cube, okay, because uh, in the basic structure of simple cubic uh, crystal, uh, unit cell, there is only one effective number of atoms, so the volume is same, okay, that is A cube. So, volume of primitive cell in body centered cubic is A cube upon 2 and in the face centered cubic is A cube upon 4, okay. Now, you can also find these values or the volume of primitive cell with the help of conventional cell volume and lattice points per unit cell. With the help of these two ratios, these two values ratio, you can find the volume of primitive cell. Okay. Now, next thing is lattice points per unit volume. So, what is lattice points per unit volume? That is equal to, for the simple cubic case, it is 1 upon a cube. For body centered cubic, it is 2 upon a cube. And for the face centered cubic, it is 4 upon a cube. Again, when you will divide the lattice points per unit cell uh, by the conventional cell's volume, you will get this value, okay? So, we can say that it is the reciprocal of the volume of primitive cell, okay? Volume of primitive cell is the reciprocal of lattice points per unit cell and lattice points per unit cell is the reciprocal of volume of primitive cell. You need to remember these values, okay? Number of nearest atoms in this case for the simple cubic case is 6, okay? For the body centered cubic case is 8 and for the face centered cubic case the number of nearest atoms is equal to 12. What, is, what does it mean by number of nearest atoms? It means that the atoms which are situated very close to the one particular atom. Okay. So how many number of atoms will be there for the simple cubic case? 6 atoms will be there which will be the nearest atoms for a particular atom Okay, in the given lattice or the crystal. Okay. So, nearest neighbor's distance in case of simple cubic structure is A that is equal to lattice parameter. For the body centered cubic structure it is root 3 by 2 A that is equal to 0 0.866 A and for the face centered cubic structure the distance uh, of nearest neighbor's distance is A upon root 2 that is 0 0.707 A. Okay? So, you need to remember these values for the exam. Along with this, how many number of second nearest neighbors are there in the simple cubic case? That is 12. In body centered cubic, 6. And face centered cubic, again 6. So, what is the number of se uh, second nearest neighbors? So, second nearest neighbors are those atoms which are at the last distance in comparison to the nearest atoms. Okay. Uh, so, uh, this is the second nearest neighbors distance. Uh, number of second nearest neighbors we have discussed. So, second nearest neighbors distance for the simple cubic case is root 2a. 
for body centered cubic case that is equal to a and for face centered cubic case again that is equal to a so you can see that the number of second nearest neighbors in case of bcc and fcc is 6 and along with this the distance of second nearest neighbors are, is also same that is a okay now if i talk about the packing fraction for all the three crystal structures simple cubic body centered cubic and face centered cubic so uh, for simple cubic the packing fraction or atomic packing fraction we can also say okay in short apf atomic packing fraction or packing fraction both are same things okay so for simple cubic it is equal to 0 0.524 and for body centered cubic it is equal to 0 0.680 and for face centered cubic it is equal to 0 0.740 and if you want to write these values in terms of pi, so for simple cubic you can write pi by 6, for body centered cubic you can write pi upon 8 root 3 and for face centered cubic you can write pi upon 6 root 2, okay. What does that mean? Packing fraction means that how much percentage of the volume of a unit cell is occupied by the atoms. So in the simple cubic case you can see that 52.4% of the volume of unit cell is occupied by the atoms, okay. In the in similarly, uh, in the body centered cubic, 68% of the volume of the unit cell has been occupied by the atoms. Okay, so this mean uh, this is uh, meant by the packing fraction or atomic packing fraction. So the next topic uh, and before that, you need to remember all these values. Question can be asked directly from uh, the values. Okay, uh, the, in the options, the values will be given, and you need to choose a particular value for a given parameter okay or maybe you need to use these values in the questions you will solve okay in the exam so you need to remember the values uh, like you should know that what is the value for a particular parameter okay so the next topic which we will discuss is so the next topic is electron diffraction so uh, first of all why or will, why we study the electron diffraction and what is diffraction? So diffraction is the bending of the wave at the edge of an uh, edge of an uh, obstacle. Okay. So what is diffraction? Bending of wave at the edge of an obstacle. Okay. So this phenomenon is known as diffraction. Now why we need to study the electron diffraction? So to determine the surface morphology of the crystal. Okay. Why we study electron diffraction? Because with the help of electron diffraction, we can study the surface morphology of the crystal. And what does it mean? Surface, surface morphology means how its surface looks. Okay. So how its surface looks, any crystal surface look. To study that thing in the crystal, we need to study the electron diffraction. After this, we need to remember a formula related to this electron diffraction topic. Okay. And what is that formula? How can we drive it? And the in-between formulas you need to remember. So for a completely free electron, what is the energy? What, what is the formula for the energy of a completely free electron? So that is capital E is equal to P square upon 2M. Okay, where P is the electron momentum and M is the mass. Okay, so E is equal to P square upon 2M is the uh, complete in energy for the completely free electron and from here we will get P is equal to that is electron momentum is equal to under root 2 M P. Okay. Now if uh, let's say if the electron is accelerated to a potential V. Okay. Then what will be the energy of that electron? So that will be equal to E V where E is the charge on the electron and V is the potential. Okay. Now, if we want to study the wavelength of the electron for the electron diffraction or in general, so what will be the wavelength of the electron? So, for that we have a formula to find the wavelength of electron that is H upon P, where H is the Planck's constraint, P is the electron momentum. So, after putting the value of P from here, equation 1, which we have derived, okay, when we have studied the energy for a free electron, then from there we got P is equal to under root 2 M E. Okay. So putting that value of P in this formula of wavelength. So wavelength becomes equal to H upon root 2 M E. Okay. And when the electron was uh, having or accelerating to a potential V. Then we have energy E is equal to E V. So we can put that value here in place of E. Then we will get the wavelength of electron is equal to H upon under root 2 M E V. Okay. On solving this value we will get. 12.26 upon root V angstrom. So what does it mean? 
it means that the electrons uh, wavelength will be inversely proportional to the square root of the voltage okay or uh, sorry uh, of the potential okay uh, at which the electron is accelerating okay and this complete value is in angstrom okay so this is the formula you need to remember for the wavelength of electron along with this in which uh, instruments we can use uh, this phenomena so that is SEM that is scanning electron microscope and TEM that is transmission electron microscope okay so these are the two instruments in which we can use the electron diffraction form phenomena so the next topic is uh, which we are going to study is now if we talk about the neutron diffraction so why we need to study neutron diffraction diffraction means uh, the same the definition of diffraction as we have discussed that is the bending of a wave at the edge okay sharp edge of an obstacle so that phenomenon is known as diffraction so next diffraction firstly we have discussed electron diffraction now we will study the neutron diffraction okay so why we need to study neutron diffraction because, because with the help of this type of diffraction we can determine the magnetic structure of a solid okay magnetic structure means that whether a solid has the ferromagnetic properties or the antiferromagnetic properties so all this type of magnetic structure of a solid can be uh, studied okay with the help of neutron diffraction next thing is uh, how can we generate a neutron beam okay so we need to know that that neutron beam can be generated by the thermal excitation okay not uh, by the electrical excitation so we can generate a neutron beam with the help of a thermal excitation now next thing is uh, what will be the neutron wavelength if we need to find a neutron wavelength in any numerical question how can we find it and what is the formula for it so neutron wavelength is equal to uh, final formula you need to remember this one that is h upon root 3 m and k b t okay m n means the mass of neutron and k b means volt boltzmann constant and t is the temperature at which we are going to find the wavelength of the neutron so how we are going to drive it we know that the wavelength of uh, any uh, particle like here oh, we are discussing neutron so wavelength of neutron will be equal to h upon p okay and up where h is the Planck's constant and p is the neutron's momentum so that will be equal to h upon root 2 m and e n where m n is the uh, mass of neutron e n is the energy of neutron and how can we drive this final formula so we know that the energy of the free neutron moving at the temperature t okay a completely free neutron at temperature t the energy of that type of neutron will be equal to en is equal to 3 by 2 kvt okay when you will put this value of en here in this equation you will get h upon root 3 m n kvt that is the value of wavelength of uh, the neutron okay so you need to remember this formula for solving the numericals this is the formula for the wavelength of neutron okay so you need to remember it next we will study the x-ray diffraction okay so let's discuss why we need to study the x-ray diffraction okay with the help of x-ray diffraction we can study the crystal structure that's why x-ray diffraction is an important topic of solid state physics because with the help of this we can study the crystal structure okay and along with this with the help of extra diffraction we can calculate the stress and strain in the crystal okay so these things can be calculated with the help of extra diffraction so that's why it is important topic and uh, with the help of x-rays we can also uh, calculate or drive the, the Bragg's law okay that is one of the most important uh, formula and the law of the solid state physics so what is the formula for the Bragg's law that is twice dhkl sin theta b is equal to n lambda or simply you can uh, remember it like 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda okay what is d there d is the interplanar spacing okay and the sin theta b theta b is the Bragg's angle the angle between the incident ray and the plane okay so this is the angle between the incident ray and the plane okay so 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda is the Bragg's formula you need to remember that next thing is what is the wavelength of x-ray okay so how can you calculate is 
it so the formula for the wavelength of x ray finally which you need to remember is the 12400 upon v with the potential in volt okay and is strong so by calculating this value you can find the wavelength of x ray and you need to remember this value okay so lambda x wavelength of x ray is equal to fc by ex ex is the energy of the x ray okay and x uh, is equal to fc upon ev ev is the again uh, the energy okay ev when you will solve this value you will get 12400 upon v in v in volt angstrom so this is the final formula you need to remember for finding the wavelength of the x ray okay now next thing is how can you uh, how can you calculate the intensity of diffracted x ray beam okay once if the x ray beam will incident at an atom and then it will diffract from it so how can we calculate the intensity of that that diffracted x ray beam so the formula is i is equal to mod of capital f square is equal to mod small f and capital s square okay so uh what is capital f here so capital f is the amplitude of the diffracted x ray okay this is the amplitude of the diffracted x ray and we can also write it the intensity is equal to mod of capital f square okay that is equal to mod of small f and s square so capital f is the amplitude of the diffracted x ray and small f is the atomic scattering factor okay what is small f it is atomic scattering factor and what is capital s that is geometrical structure factor okay so you need to remember these values and amplitude of the diffracted x ray can be written in the form of uh, in terms of atomic scattering factor and geometrical structure factor that is the product of both okay so amplitude of diffracted x ray is the product of both atomic scattering factor and geometrical structure factor so guys you need to remember the formulas for the bragg's law and the wavelength of the x ray uh, wavelength of the neutron okay which we have studied earlier wavelength of the electron so these are the important formulas to solve the numericals along with that the intensity of diffracted x ray beam okay and what is f and s here you need to remember that atomic scattering factor and geometrical structure factor the small f and s okay so after this we will study so now we are going to discuss atomic scattering factor okay that is denoted by small f okay and uh, we have used uh, the small f term uh, when we were calculating the intensity of the diffracted x ray okay so now we will study it in detail okay so atomic scattering factor the symbol for it is small f and uh, the value of small f depends on how many electrons are there in the atom okay so this depends on the number of atoms or number of electrons in the atom along with this the atomic scattering factor is the ratio of the amplitude of x ray diffracted by an atom okay when an x ray will be diffracted by an atom what will be the amplitude of that x ray uh, to the amplitude of x ray diffracted by an electron okay so when the x ray will be diffracted by an electron that a diffracted x rays amplitude okay so what is the small f or atomic scattering factor that is the ratio of the amplitude of x rays diffracted by an atom and to the diffracted by an electron okay so this uh, f is simply the ratio okay and f uh, provides an idea about the number of electrons present in the lattice site okay so about which thing f gives us an idea so it provides us an idea about the number of electrons present in the lattice site okay not exact idea but it uh, gives us uh, some kind of uh, idea with the help of this value we can tell that how the let the electrons are placed in the lattice site okay now the next thing is higher the number of atoms in the lattice site higher will be the scattering factor so uh, for the lattice site for which the scattering factor will be greater the number of atoms in that lattice site will also be greater so for example for the sodium the atomic scattering factor will be more than the lithium okay why we know that the atoms in the sodium are more in comparison to the atoms in the lithium so for the sodium the atomic scattering factor is more than the 
lithium. So from this example, it will be clear to you that how this uh, the atomic scattering factor tells us about the number of atoms or electrons present in the lattice. Okay. So after this, we will study the geometrical uh, structure factor. So geometrical structure factor we can denote it with the S. Okay, S is the symbol for the geometrical structure factor, and the value of uh, the geometrical structure factor depends on the position of atoms in the unit cell. Okay, so it depends on the position of atoms in the unit cell. Okay, and the value or the formula for the geometrical structure factor is S is equal to summation over J. e to the power 2 pi iota u j h plus v j k plus w j l okay so what is j here j is the number of atoms in the unit cell okay how many number of atoms are present in that particular unit cell and we are talking about the effective number of atoms okay and u j v j and w j are the position coordinates of the jth atom okay so with the help of the this information you can easily find the geometrical structure factor for any given crystal structure for that you will remember this formula for the geometrical structure factor that is for the capital s that is equal to summation over j where j is the effective number of atoms in the unit cell e to the power 2 pi iota into u j h plus v j k plus w j l where u v w j are the position coordinates of the j th atom okay and h k l will be the miller indices okay so with the help of this information you can easily find the geometrical structure factor for any given crystal structure okay guys so now the last thing which we will discuss in this video is the various statements of bragg condition okay you need to remember these conditions because there is a possibility that question can be asked directly from this uh, this topic okay so you need to remember all these formulas so the first bragg condition is 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda which we have derived with the help of x rays okay so 2d sin theta is equal to n lambda but for this formula there is a condition on the lambda that is wavelength of x ray the condition is that lambda should be less than or equal to 2 into interplanar spacing d okay so lambda should be less than equal to 2d okay so the next next statement for the bragg condition is that del k okay k vector is equal to vector g okay what is k here so k is the wave vector and g is the reciprocal lattice vector we will discuss it in de in detail in the upcoming videos and 2kg 2kg again k is a wave vector and g is the reciprocal lattice vector plus d square is equal to 0 so this is the separate form del k is equal to g okay this is one form for the bragg condition and the next one is 2k into g or dot g k and g is dot product is here so 2k dot g plus g square is equal to 0 k and g are the vectors okay so these three forms you need to remember for the bragg condition and question can be asked directly from these conditions so you need to remember them okay so uh, we will stop this video here and there will be more videos uh, as we have started the crash course so short in the less time we will cover the most topics okay uh, so thank you very much guys for watching this video and if you didn't subscribe this channel till now please subscribe it and press the bell icon so that you will get the notification for all the upcoming videos on this channel and how do you find the videos uh, how how are you finding the videos for the crash course please let us know by commenting on the videos and if you like the video please like it and thank you very much for watching this video guys